I'm home. African nigga in the European whip. Like we ain't come here on the European ship. Fuck your opinion, shut your European lips. Money and murder, that's that European. Sh- I know better, I just hold my tongue. Niggas yelling out total while I'm on my run. Yeah. Happily wave back as I hold my gun. Yeah, you know that shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seen a lot of <laughs> Just put it right here where it was. What in the? What in the Beyonce? Yeah. Yeah. Five. Uh, yours? Hello. Louder. Yo, 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 what's good, YouTube fam, what's good, podcast fam, it's your boy Joe Fit Johnson, back at it again to bring y'all some fire content, so today we got something special, man, we got a, you know, special guest in the building, my guy X, you feel me, um, so this is gonna be a collaboration with Dope Not Fame, where we're gonna be highlighting dope people that do dope shit, yes, you know, fuck the fame, you know, people that are doing dope shit, you know, in terms of creativity, in terms of business, um, in terms of impact, you feel me? Because we're about impact, we're about growth. Um, so I want to introduce y'all to my guy X here, and I'm gonna let him actually introduce himself, man. This is a real mogul, you know what I'm saying? And I like to do these videos because you're able to see where he's at right now, and then you'll be able to see him in, you know, a couple months, a couple years. We'll have him on the guest again. We'll do a checkup. We're gonna see where he's at. We, you know, what he's putting down today. So um, definitely introduce yourself, bro. Welcome in. Yeah. Welcome to No Man, Stack Nation, first Dope off, Not Famous in the building. First off, bro, thank you for having me today on your podcast. It's yes, sir. Fire. Right. Dope, dope, dope what you're doing. Thank and you, And yeah. So yeah, I'm Xavier. Um, designer, entrepreneur, creative, philanthropist, now author, A. Let's go. Major, you know, major. We definitely going to dive into that. Definitely got to dive definitely. into that. And man, just a child of God at the end of the day. That's how I would wrap it up. In a, yeah, uh, that's powerful. No, no, I didn't think I ever heard that before on, on the podcast. You gotta highlight that. Definitely gotta highlight that because that's that's why we at where we yeah, at. Man, why you're at man, where you're at. He's he's everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's dive into things, man. Like you know, what I'm saying, where are you from? What brought you out to LA? You know, um, something that I, I know I have an audience that's that's youthful and that you know want to inspire for more things. And I know that you know a lot of people want to move to certain places, and a lot of time we're held back by these fears and you know things like that. So what does that mean to you in terms of you know taking that you know maybe it was a leap for you, maybe you like what was that experience like for you? Well, I would say it started off really in college. Like, okay. You know, moving from the Bay to SoCal for college that was like my first step I kind of already I kind of always knew I was gonna get to LA I yeah. just didn't know like the exact you know day time but I was like you know I'm gonna get there like, yeah as long as I kind of get close to it eventually I'll get there so I think it's really all about taking that first step you know mm-hmm. not being afraid to just step out of your comfort zone and do something different because I always feel not even always what I feel like what I'm seeing right now is like whenever I go out in faith and just trust my body, like something great always happens. So, you know, mm-hmm. just don't be afraid to do something different. Yeah, for sure. And what was that experience like moving out here? Like, you know, did you experience struggle? Did you experience like, like you know what I'm saying? Some obstacles, you know, when we do great things, yeah. the devil gonna throw out obstacles to yeah. see, you know, how you, you know, how bad you want it. So what was that like for you? Man, I would say the first week that I actually moved out here, I got sick. Mm. And I, was, I went to college, like my mom was out here, my friend was out here, and I got sick, and I was like, I don't want to go to school no more, like, mm-hmm. you know, just that's just like that fear yeah. coming in, like, you know, it's a new environment. I didn't know anybody coming to LA, or mm-hmm. just SoCal, period, you know, so it was just like a whole new, like, just just different. Yeah. So I think, like, just overcoming that obstacle of, like, okay, this is, this is new, but, like, it's okay, mm-hmm. you know, I think that was one big one, and then just having to meet new people and adapt to a new environment. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And where do you go to school? Kind of tell. tell yeah, I went to uh, Cal State San Bernardino. So okay. it's about an hour ten okay. over here. Yeah, that was like a stepping stone. Yeah, yeah, they, exactly, exactly. And it was it's such a great experience. I met so many amazing people that I'm friends with now still. Okay. My homie is actually the president of our school. Like, shout out Prince. That's my brother. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, and he's great. black too. You know, so it's, it's, yeah. it's definitely it was it was a, I had a really really great college experience. That's dope. I think it's definitely like. It led me to here. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah, for that college experience and yeah. that network. Yeah. I feel like that's one of the most. And, and that can even go into what we're talking about in terms of, you know, um, college kind of being something that, you know, the newer generation and even our generation is kind of like starting to kind of like veer away from because we feel like 
It's low key a scam. I know personally for me, I'm like, I feel like the best benefit that you have for college is that network. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the things that they're teaching, like if you're going to business school, right? You're better off hiring a mentor for the business that, you're, in my opinion, mm-hmm. you're better off hiring the, a mentor in the business that you're going into than going into college and being taught about business by somebody that don't even got a business or yeah. isn't financially free or where you want to get to. So it's like, okay. what do you feel like you gain most? And I feel like, you know, I can kind of fill out your answer, but like, what do you feel like you gain most in terms of, you know, that, that experience and or that network or the education and so forth? Great question. I would say routine. Mm. For me, I would say routine. I think like just being used to having a schedule and sticking to that schedule. You know, yeah. like you got class at nine a.m. and then study hall and then this and then that. Just, I feel like it kind of like forces you to keep that structure to your day. I think that's mm-hmm. so important, especially when you're an adult. Is like having a structure for yourself. You know, whether that's mm-hmm. like your morning routine and then you go to the gym and then you know you got work hours and then say you work from home. Like you know you have your your little time gap. You know, yeah. so I think it's just. That was a, a big thing for me because it helped me just kind of like, okay, even if I'm going to transition out of school, how can I still yeah. do that same thing in my own life? Exactly. And then, mm. like you said, too, the networking, I think, I feel like that played a huge part into everyone I know out here in L.A. It's like, because, mm-hmm. you know, it's so close. And usually people that, like, what I've seen is people that are from San Bernardino or like that area, like, they grew up there. So it's like, they know pretty much everyone there or they know people in L.A. because this is their, you know, this is their area. So. Right. I think the networking aspect plays a huge part. That's powerful. And I want to dive into that routine. You know what I'm saying? Because it's different, right? When you have a J-O-B or you're in college, right? And you got a, you're on a schedule, right? You're on a schedule. But then a lot of times people go into entrepreneurship where you're working for yourself and it's a lot harder to have a schedule that's productive. You know what I'm saying? Or being able to work for yourself as hard as you would work for a company, a company yeah. you know, and being yeah. able to stay focused and not get distracted and not, you know, because, you know, people be like, oh, let's go do this. And really, you don't have a schedule, yeah. but you got to do, you know, you got to do that. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I feel like that routine is important and something that I, I help a lot of my clients out with yeah. is a fact of routine, you know, and that's something that I'm trying to, I've gotten a lot better with, but like that structure is very important, you know, and that intention yeah. is very important. Um, so yeah, I think that was, I think that was a bar, man. So I want to go, I want to dive into your brand. I want to talk about okay. brand, right? You know, it's a very dope brand. Like you said, he's a designer, brand owner, entrepreneur. So I want to dive into entrepreneurship as, yeah. This is one of our pieces. Let's go. So, so yeah, tell us about the brand. Like, what, what is your brand? First of all, what does your brand mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, what does your brand mean? What made you come up with the brand? Um, and then we'll go into, like, some of the pieces and kind of how you, okay. how you come up with it and okay. stuff like that. So, yeah, my brand is called Xave. Mm-hmm. Shop our new collection, com. We got fire pieces. Spell that out. X A H V and then worldwide, so worldwide mm-hmm. and then dot com. Yeah, Thanks. that's that. Yeah, but um, man, I started the brand actually in college. Mm-hmm. My second year of college, I was starting to meet a lot of people at my school. Like I was meeting everyone in the fraternities, sororities, different clubs, and I kept getting like the same comments, like, "Oh, your outfit's fresh," or "Where'd you get your fit?" I was just like, "I was like, this must mean something," you yeah. know, like this, this, you know, because like I always dress fly in high school, but like I feel like in college, you know, I'm staying by myself, like I can really just wear wear whatever and just yeah. have fun with it. So I was like, "Okay, this 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 means something." And then so literally, I was like, "Okay," I said, "Let me see, let me see." So my I actually had a different brand at first called X Rated. That was my first brand. Mm. So yeah, and so uh, I dropped like three shirts, a red, uh, not red, a pink shirt, a yellow shirt, and a blue shirt, and it said X-rated. Mm. And I dropped it just on some like, let me, let me see, like people messing with it, like listen, yeah. you know, I got something for everybody. Sold forty shirts the first day. Yeah, and I was like, oh. this is it. I said, oh yeah, this is this is it, you yeah. know. And it was it was just like, I was like, what the heck, like. <laughs> I don't know, bro. It's crazy. It's it was good. good. It's, yeah, it's, it was a good experience, especially yeah. like this is my first time using Shopify. Shout out to you guys. Um, this is my first time like using social media like to promote. So just like seeing how like fast the that happened, I was just like, okay, like this is different from me working these regular retail jobs. So I mm-hmm. think for me it was a really big moment. Mm-hmm. I was just like perspective shift. Yeah, so I think my brand for me really means freedom, you know, in all aspects, like freedom for me, but also freedom for everyone that's wearing it and, a part, and is a part of that community. Like I'm all about tapping into your own greatness, tapping into like being a better version of yourself. So it's like, mm-hmm. when you wear my stuff, I feel like 
in some way it should help you, you know, whether that's with confidence or like we got some new tech stuff coming out. I can't say too much about that. But you know, or yeah, even or even the tech. book, you know, like just my I feel like my whole brand overall is just about like being the best version of yourself. You yeah. know? Mm-hmm. That's powerful. In whatever way that mean in whatever way that, that looks like mm-hmm. to you. Yeah. Yeah. That's fire. That's fire. So he's got the X bags, you know, he, mm-hmm. he, he's showing y'all the change. He, yeah. he just mentioned that he's got some tech, right? Fashion and tech, mm-hmm. merging type of thing going on. Mm-hmm. Um so so heavy into the tech, heavy into the fashionable yeah. tech, man. Y'all definitely Future. Keep up yeah, futuristic. Futurist. Um so definitely make sure y'all give him a follow on Instagram and stay stay up to date with that. Um, drop your Instagram. Go ahead, drop that. Yeah, it's Xave official. So X A H V official. O F F I C I A L. Yeah. And then same with the TikTok. Um, same with uh, Twitter. All that. Same. It's all the same. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I want to dive more into brand, right? Because I know I have a lot of young entrepreneurs, right? A lot of young, you know, fashionable people, and just you know, entrepreneur in, in general. Right. All right. Hold on. I'm gonna wait for you. Yeah. Little crunching, crunching. Yeah, sorry, guys. Um, uh, <laughs> snacks, snacks. I'm saying. I'm gonna eat healthy though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no crafties. So basically, what I wanted to ask you, I know you, that you're also like a brand consultant, right? You help uh, people with brands start their brands. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and you know, help them with their business structure and you know things like that. So I kind of want to pick your brain on that. You know, like what kind of advice would you give to? The audience, right? Someone out there that wants to start a brand, mm-hmm. right? They want to. They've never used Shopify. They don't know how to market on Instagram. Like, how would you suggest to somebody to, you know, start their brand? Whether that be coming up with the product, starting out on Shopify. Would you say start off on Shopify? Mm-hmm. Or would you say to like maybe just start off just send me cash apps? You know what I'm saying? Because that's right. the thing is yeah, like, that works too. Cash yeah. at me. Yeah. Um, so like, what would be like your your advice to a, a young, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Brand building. Okay. I think the number one thing I would say is first figure out what problem are you solving and how much are people going to pay you to solve that problem for them. I feel like once you can identify that like clearly is gold, you know, because now it's just finding those people that will do that. And I think it's sad to say because I think I'm learning about I'm learning about it myself through trial and error. Just just growing up, just growing up, you know. Overall, it's like it doesn't really have to be that hard. Like you know, it's just really just solving people's problems. You know, we all have things in our life that we we want mm-hmm. fixed. Whether that's like we need a toothbrush or we need a new car or we need a new bag. It's just like how can you help that person? Yeah. Whether that's like with brand consulting, like how can you help them, you know, make their idea come to life right? in a way that like, you know, it matches their own vision. You know, I think that's just what it is. It's like making people's life easier. Right. I think we all, we all could need some, we all could use some assistance, mm-hmm. some, some help. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's, that's what entrepreneurship is. You know, yeah. entrepreneurship is solving a problem. Yeah. Right, regardless of what you think of, right? You think of Uber, you think of Tesla, you think of any of these big entrepreneurs, I mean, any of these big brands, it's solving a problem. But I, I guess I have trouble even thinking about, like, for example, like, I mean, what, what problem would Nike be solving? Some comfortable uh, fitness wear or something yeah, that makes you feel com- like, yeah, I feel like, like when it comes to fashion, I feel like what problem are, are, solving, are we solving? Yeah, solving. With, with fashion and with you know merchandise i think it's a lot of it is like psychology and like what what you're selling specifically so like going circling back with nike i feel like the problem they're solving is like they're they're motivating people number one to just do it like go for it and then number two is like they're promoting like health and wellness but you know through like confidence because like you know people when people wear nike like they feel confident people Mm -hmm feel fly so it's like the, you know you're able to express yourself whether you're like you're swimming you're playing ball you're playing baseball and this ain't no like, Nike adore, endorsement on me this yeah I mean y'all gotta <laughs> what's up yeah, Nike y'all, y'all know, know what's yeah, good yeah, y'all know. Y'all know. I'm wearing freaking Nikes right now got my balances <laughs> see <laughs> you gotta be loyal gotta... to the soil yeah yeah to the soil. Um, but yeah I'm gonna dive into okay so first tip for a young entrepreneur starting a brand it would be solve a problem all right what would be the next what would be the next thing they, they solve a problem they're like okay i want to come out with these shirts this shirt's gonna help you know my client feel 
confident. Mm-hmm. It's going to stay with my message. Um, what would be the next step? Like, how would you suggest going maybe about like marketing? Would you suggest like starting off with friends, family, social media, like websites? What What is that next step? You know, if you don't have a I would just say that. like figuring out who, like figuring okay. out who. I think that makes it easier. And I think if you can like get down like so specific, I feel like that's even like more better because just like. You know exactly who you're talking to, where they shop at, where, like where they spend their time at, where they eat at, like the music they're playing on their phone. Like once you can like know that down to a fact, it's like bro, like how can you not win? Cause you know what they you you, you know they move, you know. Yeah. But I think like that's the hard thing is like we all try to serve so many people, so it's kind of hard to dive down. Even mm-hmm. myself, like I try to solve so many problems, so it's like how can you? Ugh, attack one but you know and a lot of people are scared for that because they're like okay if I niche down because I know for example for myself right with co- coaching and things like that that some a lot of mentors have told me there's a book that I'm actually about to order called Niche Up um, that talks about the power of niching down and also Alec Hormozzi's book um, 100M Offers which I highly recommend to anyone who wants to learn more about marketing curating an offer that is appealing to you know their um, um, client he says something about niche slap, right? Like if you don't have a specific niche, if you don't know their pain points, if you don't know, like you said, their locations, where they shop, why they want to buy this, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Then it's like you're if, if you're serving everybody, you're serving nobody, right? right? So that, that, that niching down is important, but a lot of people feel like, you know, if I niche down, then what if, you know, a client wants to come that is, or, you know, yeah. a customer wants to come that may want to buy, but they're not my ideal client, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like niching down is actually powerful, but it's also like, it can be intimidating to do that because you feel yeah, like you're yeah. closing off doors to other opportunities yeah. and other people that mm-hmm. could be customers, yeah. you know? Um, so that's, that's, that's powerful. That's powerful. Yeah. Any other tips, any other gems that you want to give out to the people in terms of, you know, building a brand, building yeah. a business? I would say this is me just being real with y'all, giving y'all tough love. Yeah. I feel like organization is like so important. It's so, so important. Like, you know, a lot of us have the creativity aspect down, but we don't have, like, the organization when it comes to the business aspect of it. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, like, the paperwork, the LLC, the filing, like, just all the backing stuff, I think is so important because, like, that's what what really, like, creates the longevity, like, it creates the assets that, you know, we're all trying to make at the end of the day. So it's, like, you got to do that part right more than anything. So Mm -hmm. I think that's... That's the big three, I feel like. Yeah. You get those three down, it's like, you gonna, you gonna eat. Yeah, and no, that's Our facts. people gonna eat around here. Yeah. Seriously. No, that's facts. Legitimizing it. Legitimizing it and also having systems and operations and not... That's... Shout out to uh, Connie, Connie Falls. At Connie, C-O-N-N-I-E Falls, a.k.a. Systems Bay. Um, you should actually tap in with her. I just bought one of her uh, classes. Okay. It's cheap, but it's very good value. Like, she mm-hmm. talks about... Um, you know, your SOPs, your organization, building out a team, right? Because entrepreneurs, you got a lot of shit to do. You got a lot of steps, a lot of procedures. Even if you don't, you know, I'm, you're organized, so I know yeah. you already know what all yeah, of that shit yeah. is. But to do everything yourself, social media, product uh, development, uh, development oh, yeah. sourcing, uh, marketing, say, customer say. service, yeah. HR, yeah. finances, bookkeeping, account. It's so much. You can't do it all yourself. You're going to drive yourself crazy. You're not going to be able to scale. Right? So, shout out to Connie. She talks about systems. And you need to have systems, procedures, and you need to start hiring people to take care of the things. As soon as you get good at something, you should be teaching someone else how to do it. You should be hiring someone else that is either better than you or that you can teach how to do it. So, everything, every step, every procedure that you have in your business, you need to write it down. Something I learned from her. And then that's something I've been doing. You know, every job I have to do, regardless of it, in detail. If you own an Airbnb company and you need a cleaning service to come and they need to do every single step, you need to make sure they put two ounces of bleach or no bleach. Because whatever, every step needs to be documented so that you have these systems and procedures that you can delegate, right? So that you can start freeing up your time and focusing on the big picture. Mm-hmm. So I think that, that organization, man, that's facts. Growing up, I... I That's what I'm saying. I was not organized at all, bro. My life was a mess. And I didn't know why. It's been bad to everybody. And then, like, I think that's the biggest thing I learned growing up was, like, when you, like, really, like, self-reflect and do that inner work, you just realize, like, it's none of, it's nobody but you. The success mm. you're looking for, 
the organization, the paper you're looking for, all that, it's you. So it's like once you get your own internal energy right. That's that's literally, bro, that's what I say all the time. Like People are like, how you doing? Like, how's everything? I'm like, it's really just me versus me. Yeah. Once I'm able to curate the being that I, that I need to be in order to create the lifestyle and the businesses and the structure that I need to have and that I see myself having, that's when it'll happen. But until I can overcome my own habits, yeah. be self-aware, be able to have that structure, be able to level up and be that person, you're going to struggle. Level up. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the book. Let's definitely talk about it. What's up in that, John? So go, the title, uh, The Secret Blueprint to Level Up. After reading the blueprint, your life will be completely changed forever. Yes. That's a that's a powerful statement right there. Y'all gotta have to check this out. Working the people cop and tell us a bit about it. I'ma definitely yeah. this is gonna be uh so are you gifting this to me for the is this that's sorry. crazy. You're crazy. Come on, You're so I can give the I'm gonna give you a review on I know. Amazon. It's not even out yet, bro. I can't do you you know What? I'm gonna get I'm gonna let the people know if it's the sauce for real. It or is not. the sauce. For I'm gonna be able to let it's them know. Me, like, bro. It's the sauce. Yes. <laughs> I'm working on this book for like Three years, two, three years. Okay, fire. Yeah. So what's in there? What, what does it cover? What are some good, some important topics that you feel like, you know, what type of person, what is the, who's the niche for this? What, what, what problem is this going to solve? I think this book is for anyone looking for clarity in their life. Mm. I think clarity is just such a great feeling in the body. Mm. A vision. Yeah, a vision, a clear vision mm. that, that like, you know, you support and you stand by, you understand. I think that's what this that's what that's who this book is for. Mm -hmm. You know? Um before I got to where I'm at now, I, I didn't really know how to get there, what to do. But, you know, along the way I've I've learned so much and I, I feel like I've incorporated all of that into the book. In ways that it's like it's not just about it's it's not even really about me in this book at all. It's really all like different systems and yeah. I see you even got yeah, like you got like, like literally like things you can do in the book. It's yeah, it's, like it's, a, it's really about you. A handbook. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? It's yeah, something yeah, that you yeah. draw in. Something that you. It's a yeah, workbook. Yeah. Like, it yeah. is old beliefs, new beliefs. So that's yeah, a real workbook. Yeah, that's yeah. a real like mind. Yeah. That's fire. Yeah, no man. kizzy. Yeah, man. Because it's. Got the gold tracker in there. Yeah, can't show you too much. Yeah, it's more but, than just like, it's not just yeah. words on this motherfucker. It's yeah, what we're telling yeah, you. It's yeah. like something that you're going to actually, as you read, you work on. That's dope. Yeah. And you know, shout out to Chelsea Grayson. She signed off on the book. She's a real one. If you guys know who that is, look her up. True Religion, American Apparel. Shout out to Chelsea for signing Ooh, off. Yeah, come on. That's dope. Come on, come on. Okay, she, ch she checked it out. Yeah. Okay, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so did you say where the people can get the book? Yeah, so it's going to be available on the website and on Amazon. What? I just, I literally just announced it, bro, like, okay. what, last week? I probably, the, uh, I don't know if I should give it out. When is, when is this going to be out? Shit, bro. I don't know, but you might want to go ahead and, and, and drop that. Go ahead and give them a, a No Stagnation, Dope Not Famous promo code. <laughs> they get the book. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, yeah, if y'all... Y'all put the word dope, you get 20% off. Okay, say yeah. no more. On the website, XavierHardy.com only. Not on Amazon, you gotta pay full price. Okay. Go on the website. Go straight to the website. Go ahead, drop, spell it out. Xavier Hardy, X A V I E R H A R D Y.com. Okay. Use the code dope for 20% off at checkout. Let's go. All right, tap into that. Um, I'm gonna definitely, I'm gonna definitely have to check it out. I'm gonna let y'all, I'm gonna let y'all know, but it looks very, very fire. No, I'm all about. And if you're not a reader, I mean, if you're a podcaster, then you're probably a reader because they go hand in hand. Yeah. Or you don't like to read, so you listen to podcasts. But you know what I'm saying. I was actually thinking of making this into a podcast too, but I don't really know how that would work because it's a kind of like an audio book. Yeah, you just know? like read it. And yeah, kinda like, but it's like more of a self help book, so it's like you know. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see what God. I mean, maybe just make a make a video about it. You know how sometimes you can go on YouTube and you can, and the author will kind of explain the book and mm -hmm. kind of explain how to best utilize the book or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you could do something like that. Attach that to the book. You know, maybe send that to them in an email after they purchase it or something. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Um, all right. Something else that something else I want to share with y'all about X. Right. So I was on a run. 
one morning, right? It's about, you know, know. six, <laughs> what are we talking about? six, seven a.m. You know what I'm saying? Six, seven a.m. And, you know, I was at this time, you know, waking up, getting my runs in. And it's just like it's really revitalizing to, you know, start your day off with some energy. And this is why I promote fitness so much. I promote fitness because it's a lifestyle change. It's a it's it's. It's a mindset enhancer, you know what I'm saying? And X is somebody where, you know, I'm out there 6, 7 a.m. out there running. I run into X. Hey. Downtown LA. Very random. Look, at least on, I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but we outside working, man, and I think that's that's major, you know. So I want to ask you, like, where does, why are you outside running at 7, 8 a.m.? Like, what is your, what does that mean mm-hmm. to you? What does fitness mean to you? How, how does that play a part into your life in terms of like you out there running? Why are you out there running? Like, Great question. I love running first off. Um, have you always loved running? I, I have. Okay. Actually, I used to like go hiking back okay. in the day. I used to have a hiking group as well. I just love the clarity that comes mm-hmm. with, with like running and hiking. Like you're so present in the moment because you, yeah. you're trying to get it done. So I would say that. And then this is part of my, my morning routine. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm usually up early. Mm. I feel like it helps jump start my day. <clears throat> helps the energy move, you know, not so stagnant. Yeah. Stagnation. Yeah, you know? no stagnation. Can't be stagnant. That energy. That's 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 why I tell a lot of people as well. It's like a lot of my clients say all the time, it's like I didn't realize how low energy and unhealthy I was until I started eating bed until I started working out because it's a whole nother layer of energy. You get what I'm saying? It's like a whole high. And when you start your day off or whether you're doing it in the beginning of the day or the end of the day, say you had a hard day at work, right? Or a stressful day, you know what I'm saying? I love, yeah, it's gonna be hard as fuck to go to the gym. That's the hardest part. But once you get that workout in, you get that energy, it's a different high, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you're somebody who's working a nine to five and then also wants to go home and work on their, you know what I'm saying? Business. On their business, on their freedom. Put your own empire, guys. Then you need to make sure that Love you're making program. that time after you get off work to go to the gym, to work out, get your energy up, and then go home work on your business before you go to sleep, right? Because so much we find ourselves just working for the man, but not putting the work in for ourselves. I want to do a podcast for real. <laughs> like, we're doing a podcast right now, guys, but I feel like this is like, this is kind of fun. It is. Yeah. That's why I be doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's why I do it. But I think I would be, it, I feel like it would be cool to have like co host though. You know, like. Yeah, it's just, it's just hard for me to like. It's hard for me to commit to a co-host because the way that I measure yeah, I is I'm going to be going. I'm going to be going. It's know. very like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like you got to be like very stationary. Even the way that I record this, it's like wherever we, yeah. where, that's why we got the portable mics. It's like wherever we Hello, at, guys. we're going to pull up and we're going to record and we're going to just interview and have dope conversations. Oh, you know? Gosh, come in soon. No, yeah, I, I like the relaxedness of it. Yeah, and it's just conversation, you know, like. Like you were saying, if there are any specific questions that I had, and I really don't. It, it'll, it'll, it'll come up, you know. Um, there's certain topics that I want to ask you about, you know, when it comes to... Because this is about self-development, all right? No stagnation. Don't not famous. It's about, you know, creative freedom, right? It's about indi- individualism, right? It's about just being your unique self and then also growing, right? So I want to talk a lot about self-development, about business, about, you know, creative outlets, you know, and how to, you know tap into that creativity so what i want to ask you you know outside of this book what is a couple of your favorite books that you would recommend to people out there on self-development things that have really impacted your life and helped you get to where you are great question i love reading books books you know it's crazy i feel like growing up this is like this is not really off topic but like you know I feel like growing up, they didn't really promote us like to read books, you know, like they kind of like gave us boring books, which made us hate reading books. But like, yeah. there's so many great books if you get into reading books. Like, I don't know. It's crazy. That like, there's part... like, so much knowledge, like once you get into books, like and I've been showing my family that like it's crazy. But books that I recommend that changed my life, I would say Miracle Morning is a good book. I read that in college. That's what actually started my journey with like waking up early. Mm. Really great book. I actually... I actually have actually in the book as well too. I have a list of different books that I recommend. Okay, that's one of them. Another one I would recommend is uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Right, Foundation. Really, yeah, really good book. I'm trying to get someone to buy me that board for Christmas. I hear about the board. Oh, the game board. Yeah, I want oh, to buy it for me so we can all play, bro. That's yeah, that sounds dope. dope. I've heard about it. I haven't yeah. even played it. That it's would like be dope. Eighty dollars for a board. Game. Really? Yeah. He's smart. He said, "I'm mean, you go." Right. This is this isn't just a war game. This, this is, is a real shit that's gonna be. Yeah. Teach you some shit, give you a return on that investment. Right. So yeah. I would say that one, and then the last book. 
how to master this is ooh, this is when I should even give up. But, you know, I'm all about give, I'm all about giving away value because I know it's gonna come back. How to master the art of selling? That's a great book. Mm. And who's that by? If y'all read it, I don't even know who's by. Just look it up. But how to master? If y'all read that book, come back to me when come back to me a month after you read, you read the book. You're gonna be tapped in different perspective. No, you're gonna have money in your pocket. Okay. <laughs> like I will give you. I will give. We should make a bet, like, because <laughs> y'all will walk. That book is so good. Okay, I said no more. I, I, yeah. read, I read that. I read yeah. some sales books. I read That's that. a really good book. I'm tapped in. I'm gonna every, every time I read it, I ain't making money again. Like, I always usually read that. Like, this is a, another gym. I don't really, you know, whatever. I don't care. Usually before I drop a, like, a new collection, I always go back and read that book again. Mm. Just, you know, get your... Yeah. There's certain books you got to reread that you keep in, like, your yearly rotation, mm-hmm. like your must-reads mm-hmm. each year in terms of... And that's that's one of them. So definitely make sure y'all tap in um, are there any podcasts that you really fuck with in terms of that you listen to things that people can like what okay what do you feel like like I'm asking about books and podcasts because really what I'm trying to figure out here is when I'm you know and people listening to podcasts are probably already into self development yeah. but like you know what is what got you into self development what's really helped you develop into the businessman entrepreneur mm-hmm. mindset that you have or have you always been like this or I mean probably I have always been yeah. like this but really what helped you get to that like um can you explain the question? A little yeah, bit? yeah. Like, what yeah. helped you really take your entrepreneurship to the next level? What really, whether it be pot, like what? Yeah. For me, okay. For example, I'm gonna answer the question. Yeah. For me, it would be something like I've always been into entrepreneurship. In high school, I resold sneakers, right? Yeah. That was that was my business. Yeah. Um, and then I went into you know, coaching, right? But what really got me into coaching first was like podcasts. Like I wasn't a book reader, like you said. I feel like growing up reading was like a punishment, right? No, literally. Like, literally it's yeah. like y'all go read. It's like I didn't know that there's free game mm-hmm. in these books, y'all. Literally. Like yeah. and, and a quote that I always go back to is like if you want to hide information from black people, put it in a book. Literally. So if you yeah. want the keys yeah. from these people, from these millionaires, from these yo whether it's spiritual, whether it's business, yo, it's the answers are in the books, yo. You know what I'm saying? And then what got me into the books is the podcast, you know, because I was able to listen to it when I'm driving, when I'm doing dishes, if I'm doing laundry, warming up at the gym. Mm. People always, oh, I don't got time to watch an hour long podcast. Shut up. You drive. You drive. You got, whether you got kids, you changing their diapers, have a headphone in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get some time to put knowledge into your mind because. They're not going to teach you. Your oppressor is not going to teach you how to become free. So you can't go to school and expect for them to teach you how to become free if you want to be free. If your vision is to become free, then you cannot expect to get the answers from the same people that want you to be uh, another worker. You get what I'm saying? Right. Um, so if you, if and it's fine if you want to be a worker, if you love what you're doing, yada, yada. Everybody can't be entrepreneurs, and that's just a fact. But have a side hustle. You know what I'm saying? Have a side hustle because one thing the pandemic showed us is one income is too close to no incomes, right? They, as soon as they want to snap you, snip, snip, they're going to snip, snip. So it's, I think it's good to just have something else, whether it be a creative outlet that you can monetize, you know, and I think Web3 is going to do a good job at that. Um, but, but yeah, that was... <laughs> I answered the question, huh? <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you ain't got to answer that no more. But just to kind of wrap things up, man, where will we where, where, where see... Xavier, uh, I want you to like, you know what I'm saying, put some put some goals and put some, like, where will we see you in the next, we ain't got to put a time in it, like, because I don't, I don't believe in putting yeah. times on goals, like, it can be, what are some, some big accomplishments that we can expect coming from X, like, what's, what's, what's next up on that chopping board, next time we have this podcast, what's, what's going to be tapped in, what's going to be checked off? Hmm. Well, when when are you gonna have me again? I guess that's I mean, the question. I mean, w- when you get these checked out, yeah. right? you know, we need to be. Are you pulling up in what roses, lambs, uh, that? Like, what's you know, what's the vision looking like? That's not even. That's no, that's, that's part even, of it, but that's not even like. like yeah, what brings me sure like, yours. You know? That's that's yeah, mine. Yeah. I love cars, so yeah. I'm like I'm thirsty. But yeah. for you, <laughs> <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. Like next time you were to ask me that question, I'm like, I'm pulling up because I love cars. But like for you. What's 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 on the you know what I'm saying what's on the forte? Forte, I just would say, uh, man, I would say a long list of assets. That's definitely what I'll be back with even more. You know, just continuing to build those assets, continuing to just build 
long term wealth, exactly. passive income. Um, and then I, I guess I was just saying, like me as a person, just continue to grow, continue to like give back to my community. Yeah, creating more products that you know my customers need that is useful to you know the world. Hopefully, too. Mm -hmm. I think that's for sure. That's where we at, you know. Okay. Is there a, is there a certain amount of assets? Is there a certain amount of passive income? What is and I'll dive in. I could dive in deeper to that, but we could we could say like, okay, how how many what type of assets? Of you know assets. what I'm saying? Like, give some people some sauce. What type of assets are you accumulating? They don't know what assets is. Right? Yeah, you man, man. Right, 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 right. You guys don't even know. Yeah, if you guys don't know assets, just things that put money into your pocket, really. Um, so I would just say more brand, more brands, possibly more property more intellectual property, more stocks, you know, just things that are going to help me in the future and help my family and just that are going to give yeah, gonna give things that you don't yeah. spend money on and watch yeah. them collect dust. Yes. Exactly. Put a hole in your yeah. pocket, you know, and if you don't know about assets, you need to read rich dad, poor dad. And that's why you mentioned that because that's foundational it's assets versus liabilities. A lot of people spending their money on liabilities, right? They're spending liable not coming back right so you need to yeah. invest right and that's why it's very important to know the difference between these things oh, we still good um but yeah man i think we had a great conversation man like i said make sure y'all tap in with my guy i'm gonna Thank leave this so much ig day, yeah yeah of course of course and there's more to come i know that you said next time you come on you have all these things, but we gonna yeah, have you yeah. on before then. But yeah, yeah. my thing with this is like, cause I know a lot of young go getters, right? Yeah. And we may not be checking off, you know, multi ams and shit like that yeah. right now. But you know, we we getting there. You know what I'm saying? So right. I think it's very nice to be able to, you know, come here, right, have this conversation, and then you know, when these steps are checked off, and just to kind of circle back on why I don't believe in setting time for goals, like, oh, in two years I'm gonna have this, and because you're just prolonging it. You yeah. don't know what God's plan is for you. Very you true. know what I'm saying? So. That. Break it down into steps, right? How many steps does it take for me yeah. to get, how many assets, what does it take for me to get that asset? Yeah. Instead of being like, okay, in a year, I'm gonna have this. Yeah. Like, no, it could be in two months yeah. if you knock off all those exactly. steps in two months. Very true. You know what I'm saying? So Very true. I like okay. to kind of, you know, have this first, you know what I'm saying? And then y'all see the growth, y'all see the process. Cause that's what I'm about. Being transparent, yeah. showing people the process. And that's why I take it. I put everything on YouTube personally myself. Yeah. Cause I'm like, y'all can see the growth. Y'all can see what I've been through. Y'all can see, the evolution. So we the see growth, the journey. The journey. Do it for the journey, not for the end goal. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey, because this is a beautiful thing. We're gonna look back at this day. Like remember when we before before this podcast, car battery died. The uh, roof. My we were supposed to be on my rooftop. My rooftop uh, was booked. That's crazy. Never ever booked. Go outside. Car battery died. Left the lights on. Had to jump it. Struggling with the jump for a little second. It's just like little. You know what I'm saying? But it's like at the end of the day. You must persevere. You know what I'm saying? We're here. And we're we, here. And we finished the, we finished the podcast. Finished the podcast, man. So yeah. make sure y'all hit the like, hit the subscribe, drop a comment for your boy. Hit your boy with a follow. Stay in touch. Um, stay on the lookout for this book that's going to drop. Follow him on the IG. Don't forget to use dope for that 20% off, man. Whole lot of game. No stagnation, dope. Not famous. I know and better, I just hold my toe. Ex, man. Niggas so, yelling out total me. while I'm yeah. on my run. So. Yeah. Happily wave back as I hold my gun. The chips in a dip to the, the I seen a lot of niggas the die, they all look like me. Know your rights get denied when you look like me. Yeah, we both from different sides, but you look like me. How come the man in the mirror never look like me? I'm familiar, quite peculiar. Do you know yourself? Are you tipped into your garden? Do you grow yourself? Are you living in the past? Do you hold yourself? Accountable for all that's bad, like you owe yourself a new life, a new bitch, a new you. And we out here struggling goals, for the vlog. A new crew. His car died. You know them, you know we out here still too. gonna make it happen. Let me see. You I'm about to try to cancel. Let's see what happens. I ain't trying to preach because I hate that shit. Hey, but hey, you I lucky. I was trying to call you. I was like, I, I'm finna cancel. <laughs> Cause I'm like, shit, this is a lot. Like, we should do it on a fresh day. Nope. He said no. Nope. Knock it out. That's how God does you, bro. You gotta see how bad you point it. Yeah, uh, see, I was thinking of it the other way too. I'm like, the universe. The universe said, here's some obstacles. That's how I get. That's how I be. Yeah, I'm, getting, I'm getting used to them now. I'm like, damn, this every new level, bro. Every new level. Like, fuck. One in the car. Okay, shit, come get in the car.